Hey there, welcome to my channel, excuse my appearance. In today's episode, I am collaborating with Hadassah um, for our So It Goes final episode. Um, for those of you who don't know, we collaborated on a mini series to just focus on different DIY challenges. Um, so this episode is our final episode and the theme of this episode is just fall wear. Um, so in my tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to turn some oversized um, animal print pants into a super cute ruffle skirt with a drawstring on the side. Also, if you are subscribed to my channel, remember to turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss any of my new videos. So I'm starting out with these oversized um, animal print pants that I got from the plus size section on sale from Rainbow for $7. Um, so let's get to work, let's get to it. So the first thing that I did was I turned my pants inside out and then I opened the inner seams. So the inner seams are basically the seams that connect to the crotch. Um, and I was gonna take the crotch seam out, but I decided not to, and I'm glad I didn't, because I saved myself a whole bunch of time. Then after that, I tried on my pants, well, now it's a skirt at this point, and I tucked in the straps just so that they wouldn't get in the way, and then I basically just pinched the front part of the skirt together, um, tight enough so that it could fit where I want my skirt to actually sit on my waist. And then I just started pinning um, along where I pinched the fabric. Um, and I pinned straight down, as straight down as I could, as possible as I could. And the important thing too to know about this is that you don't want to pull, you don't want to pinch the front part too tight because you still have to repeat this step with the back of the skirt. So if it's too tight in the front, then you're not leaving yourself any room to um, to get rid of fabric from the back as well. So be careful. So then I took it off and I laid it down flatly and I made sure to lay it down so that the front crotch and the back crotch were on the sides. Um, and then from there I just took a fabric chalk and I traced over where I placed my pins. Then I took out the pins and then I just sewed along the lines on each side. So this is what my stitches looked like afterwards. I know it's hard to see, but trust me, they are there. So then I tried on my skirt again to just make sure I was happy with the fit and to see what other adjustments I needed to make. And this time when I tried it on, um, I decided that I wanted to close up the pockets because it was making my hips look a little too wide and I wanted to get rid of the, um, the straps as well. Then I placed a pin near the top of my knee kneecap because I thought that I needed a lot more fabric um, so that when I would gather the skirt the body of the skirt would end like midway above my kneecap if that makes any sense so then I figured that I needed to close the opening of the skirt a little further down because where I placed the pin if I draw my fingers straight across I could see that there was still an open space so I continued to pin down that center seam so then I wanted to create a new hemline for what would become the bottom of the skirt and so in order to do that I want to draw a straight line along where the pin is um, and the smartest way to do that in, in my opinion is to just fold the pants in half so that the the layer with the pin is on the top of the fold so then you want to draw a straight line along where the pin is um, and I was trying to be cute so what I did was I lined up my ruler along the pin as straight as I could get it and then instead of just tracing where the ruler um, was placed, I took a piece of tape and, and, and stuck it along where the ruler was so that I could get like a clean straight line and I could easily um, add my seam allowance underneath the, the tape. So before I cut um, this skirt, I just wanna make sure that I pin down both sides so that the layers don't shift. 
So in order to get rid of that awkward crotch protruding area, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the skirt inside out and I'm gonna position it so that the side seams of the skirt are now in the middle and the middle seams are now on the side. I hope that makes sense. So we're basically just positioning it the way that we first did when this was just pants. Um, and then from there, I'm going to continue drawing a line um, from where I stopped sewing that, and the line I want it to reach the end of the, the bottom of the skirt. So yeah, so once I do that, then I will completely close up the open crotch area. So here I'm just sewing down along those lines that I just added to the bottom of my skirt. Here I'm just trying on the skirt to make sure that I'm happy with the fit. Um, and you can see that it's shorter than what it was originally. And the reason why I made it this um, length instead is because that's exactly where it ends is exactly where I want the top of my ruffle to be. Um, so that way when I do runch the skirt, it'll still be a good length. Um, I hope that makes sense. I cut off the excess fabric and then I um, cut off the pockets and then I searched um, the bottom of the skirt. If you don't have a serger, you could always just use a zigzag stitch um, with the shortest length. So now in order to make the drawstring section of the skirt, what you wanna do is you want to turn your skirt inside out and you want to measure halfway between the middle seam and the side seam of your skirt and you wanna draw a straight line. And that straight line can start wherever you want your drawstring section to start. To make the casing for the drawstring, you'll need a strip of fabric that is the same length as the line that you just drew on your skirt. And then the width should be about four inches. Now later on, I realized that it didn't actually need to be four inches, so learn from my mistakes. So you want to search all four edges of the strip of fabric and then you want to draw a vertical line down the middle of the strip of fabric. Again, if you don't have a serger, you can always create a serged effect by setting your machine to a zigzag stitch with the shortest length. Then you want to fold that strip of fabric in half along the vertical line that you just made. And then you're going to line up the fold of the strip of fabric along with the vertical line that you drew on your skirt. And the purpose of this is just to make sure that the middle of the strip of fabric is in line with where you want your drawstring to be. Then you're gonna pin down the strip of fabric to the skirt. And I started by just pinning the corners just to have like extra security I guess and then I um, pinned like inside of the corners um, and then after you've done that you want to stitch on the line that you drew and you want to stop about mm, like an inch down from the top of that line then you want to sew a rectangle shape around the vertical line the closer you sew to the vertical line, the less space you'll have for your drawstring. So just keep that in mind. I only ended up sewing about half the distance between the vertical line that I drew and the edge um, for both sides of the vertical line. Um, and so that left me with extra fabric, um, which in the end I ended up surging off. So I would say that instead of making your strip of fabric four inches, you really only need to make it about two and a half inches. To make the actual drawstring, you'll need a long strip of fabric. And my fabric was about two inches wide and 37 inches long. And it actually didn't need to be two inches wide because the string came out a little bit too thick. So in reality, you only need about one and a half inch wide. So here is a demonstration on how you need to fold your fabric in order to create the drawstring. So you want to take one end and fold it to the center of the fabric and take the other end and fold it to the center of the fabric. And then you want to just fold the fabric in half so that 
the two folds are sandwiched on top of each other. Then once you've done that, you wanna pin it down and then stitch along the edge of the fabric. So when I first sewed the strap, it came out a little bit too wide. So I ended up folding it in half and stitching um, to make it smaller. So you really only need to start off with a strip of fabric that is an inch and a half wide. So I was pretty happy with how my drawstring came out after I folded it in half. The next thing that needs to be done is you need to thread your drawstring through the casing. So the best way to do that is to start by creating an opening because the safety pin is too wide to go around the, the top part. So you wanna uh, create an opening that will leave space for the safety pin. Then you wanna thread your drawstring through the casing and you wanna pull it out through that opening and then use that opening to give you space in order to um, thread the drawstring through the other side of the casing. Then once you've done that, you can just turn your skirt back on the right side and just kind of play around with your drawstring and see how cute it looks. Aren't you excited? We're almost done with our skirt. So to make the ruffle for the bottom part of your skirt, you wanna get a piece of fabric that is about 5.5 inches wide and that will include the seam allowance. Um, and then the length should be the circumference of your hip divided by two plus your full hip circumference. So then from there you want to serge um, one edge of the, the strip of fabric and both sides of the strip of fabric and then on the other edge you want to serge it and fold it in half because it'll be the hem and if you have any raw edges where um, different pieces of the, the fabric is connected you want to serge those raw edges as well so then i used a gathering foot in order to create a ruffle out of that strip of fabric and i have the link to the gathering foot that i used down in the description box so with your skirt on the right side you want to take your ruffle and place it on top of the skirt with the edges facing right sides facing as well and you want to just pin the ruffle down into place and I just left a gap between where the drawstring casing is um, so that when I tie my string I'd have space for that. So once you've pinned the ruffle to the edge of the skirt you want to just do a straight stitch all around the skirt and you're done. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just wanna share some love. And if you haven't already seen the other episodes of this So It Goes mini series, be sure to check them out. All of the episodes are listed down below in the description box. So until next time, ciao.